Hello everybody. It's very exciting to be here and announcing um, Irve's talk about what Temenos did with MongoDB. And this is, you, you might have seen the high watermark benchmark that we publish, they published a couple of months ago. This is a story about how they transformed the thing. So without further ado, Irve, please come out um, and tell us how you transformed your, your system. I don't need a microphone. Guys, can you hear me, just to be sure? Okay. Well, first of all, very sorry. Okay, as you can hear, I am a French speaker. That means you will have to support my crappy French accent. Okay. And something completely new for me, I can see all attendees have a headset. That makes me nervous, you know. This is like when I want to chat with my children in the car, okay, and they are never answer because they have a headset on the head, you know. Mad. Okay. Let's speak about what we did with Temenos. Uh, before, for the context, I need to explain a little, well, blah, 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 blah. Okay, this is the agenda. Uh, I will explain what is Temenos, what are we doing, and then I will speak about why we choose MongoDB, what we did with MongoDB, and then we will speak a little bit about performance and challenges, and at the end, we will make a conclusion. Okay, Temenos. Temenos, this is a banking software company. We are creating about any software for all uh, financial service uh, industry. Okay, we have more than 3,000 customers. We are in more than 150 50 countries. Okay, uh, and we have 28 years of experience. Basically, you can see the company was founded in 93, 1993. And this year, this is our anniversary. This is 30 years. Okay, that means clearly you can see we are not a startup. Okay, we are not geek. Okay, we have a lot of experience in a difficult market. Okay, it's a financial service industry. If we speak about our customer, we cover all customers uh, we have in the financial services from the small, small bank, like a private bank, to middle bank, commercial bank, to big retail bank. Okay? We can have bank with only 500 accounts, okay? and we have bank with 150 million accounts. And we are working with 200 more partners. Okay? That means you can imagine how it's difficult to have a software covering all the customers we can have on this world. On top of that, be aware that each country, each region, each customer have his own rule, his own regulation. That means when we have a big software, I think we can say a big beast called Transact, I will speak about that after, we have to cover absolutely everything. If we speak about milestone, and you will understand why I show you that, we have big milestone, milestone, okay, first in 93, we start to generate package to upgrade automatically a bank, and after we move to 24 by 7, uh, the system never stop, is working 24 hours, 7 days per week, then in 2011, we move to the cloud, it was with VM, 2020 move to cloud native, cloud agnostic. 2021 all our portfolio of products move to the cloud. And finally now we are pure API, BAS, bank as a service uh, in 2022. Why I show you that? Because I don't know if you have some geek on the room, pretty sure they will say, yeah, but hold on, you are very late, you know, moving cloud native in 2020 is not really good. You need to understand our customers are kind of fragile, are afraid about new technology, new stuff. It's difficult to penetrate the market with new stuff. We speak about bank guys, okay? You can imagine what we are doing, we have to be 200% sure it's working first, okay? And then after the customer have to accept. And that is very difficult. I can imagine you don't want 
when you go to a grocery shop and you have to pay okay receive a nice message oh sorry for the inconvenience please come back tomorrow the system is down you know you will not accept that okay or worse when you have to pay something suddenly you you, you discover that your account balance instead to be ten thousand dollars is minus negative twenty thousand dollars that means the system have to work and we have to be sure about what deliver and same thing the customer doesn't want to take new technology okay and that this is very important because what we did this is migrate to mongodb well it's not really a migration i will explain okay before explaining what we did with mongodb i have to explain a little bit our application our application called transact is a big beast very a big beast this is millions of lines of code okay and uh, the code is written in basic okay and what we did we have what we call a platform framework i am the product manager of the platform framework we did the platform framework to translate this basic in java and then we execute all transact in java to be multi-platform on top of that because we are native not sql database or non-SQL database, we are native with the application to a peak database. I don't know who knows what is a peak database. Raise your hand. Okay, two only. Well, a peak database, the other name is multi-value database. It's kind of a non-SQL database, but trust me, it's another nightmare. Okay. I explained that because now we decided in 2020 to move our application to MongoDB. Why? Okay. You can imagine our customer, the volume of the data is increasing drastically. Okay. We move from multi-value to SQL for this reason already. I soon we used to reach a table of, well, 20 years ago of maybe one terabyte. The database used to crash. Then we moved to SQL database. Okay. Unfortunately, all the data continue to increase okay i don't want to say any name of customer but you can imagine if i speak about bank of china okay we are speaking about more than 100 million of accounts that's mean you can imagine the size of the database it's enormous okay on top of that our application because they are native peaks we are not speaking sql we are speaking jql okay for jbase query language okay that is to understand the history and then because this history uh, we have our data is not really readable i will show you that after but we choose mongodb because today we absolutely need to have the capability to read to, to have the data readable okay and we choose mongodb for one of the first reason this is because this is native json you will understand after why but that is very 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 important and then after we move but because this is an open source document database non-sql somehow we come back to the origin okay we were non-sql multi-value we moved to sql and now we come back to non-SQL, but with a document database having the fo storage format in JSON. And we apply MongoDB for all our microservices that we did two years ago. And this year to our big beast, uh, Transact, the core banking system. If during the analyze, okay, uh, it was very important to understand why it's MongoDB or document database is better than an SQL and RDBMS. For us, one of the main reason is the schema less. Okay, you need to understand even in an SQL database, our schema is just two columns: the ID, and you will see after a big XML record we need to constantly alter the schema that's mean we cannot use uh, we cannot have a, a hard-coded schema okay each region is different typically in us the race is really important 
as an example for a data okay if you go somewhere else it will be the religion if you go somewhere somewhere else i don't want to be bad it will be the caste okay that means our schema need constantly to change depend again the customer the country the region okay another thing very important like i told you our data increasing drastically okay and we need to scale when 10 years ago i think the bigger customer used to be 20 million today our biggest customer is 150 million account and i speak just about account okay we have thousands of tables that means we need to have the capability to scale today okay on premise but mainly in the cloud and definitely mongodb scale wonderfully sorry about my bad presentation i can give you another bad example without saying any name of database a provider of database have a database called exadata okay maybe you know what i'm talking about exadata is eight instances of the database We did a high water benchmark in 2015. We discovered that after five instances, active, active in Exadata, everything fall down about scalability. Okay, that's when MongoDB bring us the scalability we need for the high volume. And because we moved to the storage format JSON, MongoDB bring, I think you saw the keynotes, wonderful MongoDB engine query okay for full text search and stuff like this that is really important i will see you after we are in xml with sql database we have xpass i don't know if you know what this is it's very difficult to query our data and this is very slow with mongodb this is json we are making a full search and it's really quick and that is very very important another thing very important is we don't have store proc with mongodb okay uh, with sql we have a lot of store proc sometimes this is problematic with the atomicity moving to a non-sql with a document database we remove all the store proc and that is another big advantage a store proc kills the scalability in sql i don't know if you are aware for people knowing database in SaaS. Azure SQL or stuff like this, they are removing the store proc because this is a killer about scalability. Natively, MongoDB doesn't have any store proc. And that is a very big advantage of MongoDB over RDBMS over SQL. Now I will, I will speak about this famous story, storage I explained. We were universe JBase peak database and you can see how it used to be the record storage in the database i don't know if you can read that we are few in my company to read that me i can because i have 23 years in temenos that's mean i used to work with this format but you cannot do nothing with this format okay then in 2003 we moved to sql then we choose xml and you can see how is the record xml it's a nightmare on top of that as soon as we have to move our data to speak to an external system as you can imagine an ecosystem today in a bank is not just only the core banking system but is a core banking system with plenty of satellite products and we need to externalize the, the, the data whatever the mechanism it could be inbox outbox it could be with a connector it could be with uh, api gateway we need to externalize our system that means as soon as we have to give one of our data to an external system because how we store our data we need to transform the data okay and if we need to transform the data this is cpu this is memory this is io this is something you have to pay in the cloud that's mean it starts to be unacceptable to have the format we have in xml okay to go a little bit more in details i don't know if yeah you can see that is a record a, a tiny one okay in xml and moving to mongodb we are moving to this format And you can see the record is perfect. 
they are about nothing to do, is readable. As soon as we have to externalize the data, we take the record and we push out. That means this is very fast, this is perfect. Now you should say, yeah, but hold on, pretty sure the size of the record is bigger because you have the current name. Well, you have the key, okay, compared to the XML. Lucky us, MongoDB compressed the data. That means at the end, if we take a storage of a SQL provider, or if we take the size of a record with MongoDB, the size of the record is MongoDB, even if we have the key value pair with the key uh, as a value. Okay? Uh, I don't want to explain why C2, C3, C4. This is the position of the nodes. Complicate, complicate. And that is the beauty. Okay? We have some challenge. Now let's speak seriously. Everything I said is nice, but we have some challenge. When you are moving from an SQL database, you have store proc, no miracle. Don't tell me you don't have store proc with an SQL database. Okay? That's mean, like I said, with MongoDB, you don't have the capability to have a store proc. That means the first challenge for us was to completely rewrite our store proc and using the aggregation pipeline. It was not easy. It was tricky, I would like to say, but we did it and it was the first challenge. Another challenge, this is a select for update. As a such, select for update doesn't exist in MongoDB, as a such. I can see Boris already making, uh, okay. And worse, select for update skip lock doesn't exist at all, okay. For the select for update and select for update skip lock, we use the mechanism of lock semantic in MongoDB. Not easy again, but we did it and it fixed all our problems. Another very important problem is the save point. MongoDB doesn't have a save point. And for us, it was really important, the save point. You can imagine when we execute a batch, we need to update the status. Don't want to go in details with a lock. Then we are executing the transaction of the job. If the job crash, we cannot roll back the full transaction. We have to roll back to the save point and keep the lock on the status. Otherwise, another thread of the batch will process the status and it will turn in wrong with error, error, error. That means we need to have save points. MongoDB doesn't have save points. But the beauty of MongoDB, they are sub-transaction. And how we fix the save point, we start when we start a transaction, we start a transaction with MongoDB and when we reach a save point, we start a sub-transaction. And if, if something bad happens, we roll back the sub-transaction. That means we come back to the save point. And voila, everything is perfect. But it was challenging, it was a lot of job for us. Okay. Then after we have the storage, numeric versus string. You can imagine when you short uh, a numeric or when you short a numeric as a string, the result is different, okay? And again, we have to trick our application to use the correct uh, numeric string storage of MongoDB in a JSON. But for us, it was a challenge. And finally, this is the locking mechanism of MongoDB, optimistic versus pessimistic. It was not easy at all. Uh, on top of that, be aware that our application Transact 20 years ago was using the application lock, not the database locks. Okay? I don't know if you know what is it. This is the application decide to take a lock, not the database. Okay? And worse than that, our application Transact has the capability to take a lock on a non-existing record. This is mad. But this is how this is, okay? And again, with semantic lock, with everything, at the end, all the challenge will pass with a wonderful support. I will speak about that after, okay? Well, we did it, okay? Now, let's speak about performance because maybe MongoDB bullshit us about performance, you know? We don't know, we don't know. Then, 
we have a kind of benchmark. We simulate a retail bank with 50 million of customers, 100 million accounts. We are um, we did in uh, Azure uh, with the BAS bank as a service. And well, I don't want to get details. And we inject transaction. Okay. In 2022. We reach 2022. Microservice was already using MongoDB. Okay. And I don't want to tell you what kind of SQL database we used to have, but it was an SQL database, trust me. It was a distributed SQL database. We reach 102 transactions per second. What are 2000K transactions per second? For us, it was already wonderful. Okay. Now we move to MongoDB and that is a new number we did just three, two months ago with MongoDB. And I will be honest with you, the code base between R22, this is a version 2022, and the code base R23 is not the same. Okay, We constantly monthly, yearly, improve our code, we add new features, we try to optimize our code, but I can guarantee you this is not the code change give us all these improvements. That means this is definitely the database. And today reach 150k transactions per second, nobody can fight with us anymore. Okay, and if we speak about performance, efficiency, well, you, you can read the data. And for us, it's a big win. Because we didn't reach the end of the scalability of MongoDB. That is very important. We simulate a big bank with 100 million customers, 100 million accounts. That means today we can go to customer and say, hey guys, if you have problem with SQL, now we are ready with a document database called MongoDB and you will not have problem anymore. On top of that, you will perform better with less CPU, with less memory, than with less I.O. And that is the key for us. And I have to admit, thank you MongoDB for that. I don't know if that makes sense I speak about that, but this is the infrastructure of the benchmark. Okay, as you can see, uh, we have the core banking using uh, MongoDB Atlas. Uh, we have the financial crime uh, migration uh, mitigation uh, still on SQL, okay, but we will migrate that next year. And all microservices using MongoDB Atlas. Well, I don't know if you want to see. This is our benchmark. Okay, and again, we reach 150,000 TPS, and that is unbelievable. As a conclusion, I will be very honest, guys, I am not a salesman. I am not here to sell you MongoDB or to sell you a Temenos product. Okay, I used to be a developer. I am now a product manager. I am here to, to, to pass a message to you. This is, I have some colleagues didn't believe, some colleagues and some friends in the IT industry could be insurance, could be healthcare, having big beast, big software saying, no way, we have SQL, we stick with SQL, this is impossible to move to a document database or to move to another database. Okay, this is wrong, we did it. And trust me, we have a big beast. And on top of that, I am not sure you understood, we didn't migrate to MongoDB. We add MongoDB to our database of a ring. That means what is working today with MongoDB continue to work with Oracle, MS SQL, Postgres SQL, DB2. Well, database we are supporting SQL. This is not a migration. And the same code base is working. We have an abstraction layer, that's for sure. But we did it. This is possible. That means having an excuse saying, now we cannot migrate to a new database because we have a big dinosaur, big software, big monolithic software is wrong. We did it with better performance, with better everything. On top of that, it was 360 months day for this project. Some people will say, oh, it's a big project. Some people will say, it's a small project. It's a big project. 
personally, as product manager, as soon as I set up a project more than 150 months a day, it's wrong. You know, 350 months a day, this is a year. When you start a project and you finish one year later, most of the project is obsolete already. Whoever we did it in 350 months day, again, some people say we migrate to a document database, this is a five years project. Wrong. Okay. When I speak about the 350 months day, it was just for development. 70 months day for analyze and test. Here we have only one test, a big regression with 42,000 scripts. Okay, but anyway, and now we just have to finish the go to market. It will be another 50, 30 months day and then we are ready with MongoDB. Okay, I just want to insist about the partenariat we did with MongoDB, with Jörg, the guy who was here on, the, on stage. It was, I don't know if I have a word in English to say that, it was absolutely wonderful. Usually when we work with a partner, okay, we ask for a, a support and we have to be, wait one, two, three days or raise a ticket. It's a nightmare. The partenariat we have with MongoDB, it was MongoDB coming to us and say, well, okay, let's go to the next problem, you know, and it was me saying, whoa, hold well on, we are not ready, you know. The, an amazing support of MongoDB. We can see this is a dynamic company and it was wonderful to work with them. And another thing, I know may be silly, but it helped a lot. Usually when I used to go to my team and say, let's go support a new database, okay? All the team was, oh no, just another database. This project, when I said, okay guys, now we support a new database, but it will be not an SQL database, it will be a, a document database, MongoDB. Everybody was excited. And trust me, when your team, when your developer is excited, it's working fast, better than if they are not motivated at all. Well, <laughs> okay, if you want more information about Temenos, who knows Temenos? Raise your hands. Oh, I can see a few people, few people there, okay. Um, well, if you need more information, you can go on Temenos or you can contact Jörg uh, if you have some question, he's here, okay. Unfortunately, I will not make a session question and answer because I have to run to the airport, okay. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>